and gentlemen, it's time for the Movie Trivia Shmoda. 40 competitors going at it. The last person standing gets a shot at any title of their choosing. Five competitors will start at the table. People who have the lowest amount of points on the desk will be eliminated, and then new competitors will enter. The free-for-all, it's coming back. 40 competitors, the winner gets a title shot of any division of their choosing April 24th. Make sure you get your tickets to the SchmodownLive.com or Patreon.com slash Schmodown at the $10 level. Become a $10 patron today. Hello, everybody, in movie trivia Schmodown universe. This is such an amazing, amazing season. So here is why it is so important for Patreon. Patreon is the lifeblood of the movie Trivia Schmodown. It has been for a very long time. We are doing three pay-per-views versus, and that will be one match, one big match, the throwdown. Also, two big matches inside of the throwdown, and then at the end of the month, Battlefield. So that's five big pay-per-view matches, and guess what? If you are at the $10 level, you get all three of them. You're also going to get one commentary match a month. So let's say that uh, Rachel Cushing and Mike Kalinowski decide they're going to watch their San Diego Comic-Con match together and they're going to comment on it. You guys will get that at the $10 tier it up. $20 and up. We are doing special Q&As with certain patrons. So Dan Merle just won a match. Well, if you're the $20 patron, the link will be sent out. You can join the stream and ask question right after his match. And this, I didn't even mention the exhibition. You get an exhibition match also. Exhibition that will happen once a month that you guys will get. Patreon.com slash Schmodown. Join today. It's all going to be worth it, but we thank you. We thank you for your support and everything that you have done. Now, go enjoy the match. Enjoy the program. Whatever you're watching on SEN, enjoy it, and we'll see you next time. Even though the player misspelled the, the title, he hit all the syllables so it is a correct answer. Very good. <laughs> Very good. <sighs> Andrew, I hate what I'm about to say, but you've impressed me. You showed up on time. You were early. You might have even slept in a garbage can. Look, the bottom line is this. You got a work ethic, and I think you're ready for the final test. Now, don't get excited. Most people never make it this far, and the ones that do usually fail. Who's your favorite play-by-play -play announcer of all time? Is this part of it? Uh, Al, Al Michaels. Oh, God, he's great, isn't he? The best. Funny, you know, Al Michaels actually auditioned to be in the Schmodown. Went through the same trials you did. He actually sat in that chair, and he failed this test. Wait, Al Michaels is good. He's really good. He can call Super Bowls, World Series. He's just not Schmodown good. Are you ready for your test? Yeah. Uh, your final challenge begins now. Who's the most controversial celebrity in the history of the Schmodown? Uh, uh, Jane Fonda. What is the most hated Star Wars planet? Uh, uh, Bespin. What noise does a bird make? <laughs> Who's the best speller in Schmodown history? Uh, anybody but JTE. What's the best Van Halen song? All, yes. It's definitely correct. Is David O. Russell an Irish name? Who cares, it doesn't matter. Your final question to pass. What is the most beloved wheel slice in Schmodown history? Meryl Streep! Meryl Streep! Meryl Streep! Meryl Streep! Meryl Streep! Meryl Streep! Okay, okay. Meryl Streep! Okay, I have neighbors. That's correct. <laughs> you did it! Congratulations! <laughs> Welcome to the Schmodown, Andrew. Hey, I'll tell you what, you still got those Coors Lights in your trunk sport? Duh, of course I do. And I go get it. Hey, it's probably melted. Hey, hey, I was just thinking, first the desk, next the award show, dude, right? I can do the award show next year. Don't ever say that to me again. Why don't you get the hell out of here? To get the beers? No, just leave. I'll see you out there in the desk. Uh, 
Andrew? Yeah? Lock the door on your way out. Welcome back to the Movie Trivia Schmodown. Alongside Andrew Guy, I am Mark Baby Carrots Ellis in this scintillating singles matchup between Ben the Bandit Goddard and JTE making his return. Andrew, in this match, there's a lot of storylines. We have a one-time champion making his long-awaited glorious return to the Schmodown. We have another competitor looking to prove himself once and for all. And... We have a rookie on the announcing desk. How are you doing there, buddy? I'm good, man. It, 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 hey, best friend. It's good to see you. I'm excited to be here. Uh, I, I, I don't want to forget what I'm doing here. Now, I know that this is mainly about our friendship, but really, the second most important thing is the match of the day between these two incredible competitors. Now, one of them I've been familiar with for years. He's a guy that I looked up to in the team's division. And on the other side of it, we have a guy that had an incredible rookie debut. I mean, he was vying for rookie of the year, and then he just didn't show up in the singles tournament. So a, a really great record, great accuracy from Goddard here, but not a lot of time at the desk. Yeah, we'll get to Ben the Bandit in a minute, but the, the headline of this match has to be the return of JT. He had so many championships and championship defenses alongside Jeff Snyder, his partner with the Patriots. What a legendary team they were, but now JTE comes back, and it's a much different sport than it was when he left at some Two years ago, the competition has gotten larger, it's gotten fiercer, maybe the question's tougher, trickier. Do you think that he's going to be up to the challenge once again, or has the game passed him by? Well, it's all about him, right? It's all about what JTE wants to bring to the table today. And his last performance here in the movie Trivia Schmodown, he left a lot to be desired, especially in round two. Putting up zero points in round two is not something you ever want to do, especially from a former champion. I mean, six title defenses, that's records. You know, that he's in the Hall of Fame. But what has that done to his mentality coming in today? He's had a lot of time away from the ring. Let's hope he took that time to study because everyone studies now and also to forget the past and maybe remember the best moments of the past. So you got to remember a little bit, but forget a lot. Does that, does that make you know, sense? Maybe he learned to be a little more independent. And uh, converse to that, I think that Ben Goddard clearly relying on his faction, the Den, and really the Den mother, Kate Mulligan, his manager, to get that backbone. Because like you said, Ben is such a fierce competitor, and he just he missed some opportunities there in that singles tournament. He does come into this with a 1-0 and singles record proper, but I know he's looking for a measure of respect. Yeah, you know, the, the guy that he took down earlier on was was RB3. And this is no shot at RB3, but he went into that match at 0-2. Goddard had a perfect first round. He, he Again, he was looking like maybe going to be rookie of the year. And then he kind of just fell into teams only. They weren't able to go through that bracket. They weren't able to get to the top of the mountain in the team's division. And so it's almost like we forgot about how good Goddard is in singles. And I think today, taking this match, which, by the way, someone passed up on this match. Ellis, someone passed on this match. Goddard stepped in there immediately. He goes, you know what? I want to make a name for myself. How about I beat a former champion? How about I beat a six-time title defender in JTE? Oh, thank goodness you didn't pass on this match. Not that I haven't done these solo before and I'm completely capable of doing so. But for now, we turn it over to our storyline expert. How did we get here? Nerd Chronic's about to show you right now. legacy is incredible the wins with the Patriots that's an all-time run it's one of the it's one of the greatest performance runs we've ever seen the history of the league you can't you can't take anything away from it I've been away from the game for a while and the things I'm hearing is a lot of disrespect I am coming back to lay claim what is mine little evil is coming home Christian I am going to the Finstock Exchange I don't know I felt like a little bit while I stepped away from the game maybe Jeff is the reason why they did all this? No. If I was doing a solo career, just like he was during that time, I would have been just as successful. That's why I'm kind of back to show you guys and remind some of you. Ben Goddard, ooh, of the den. 
versus JTE Ooh, of JTE the Finstock Exchange. JTE makes his return. Goddard yeah. Young, he's hungry. You know, and he's somebody last year who was the anchor of his faction for the first part of the year. And I think he's a player that a lot of people in this league expect to beat you. Potential Rookie of the Year, he's played in three divisions. He's won a match in all three of those divisions. We're going to beat you. Underestimate us. Throw us out the window. Give the belts to whoever you want to give with before a single match has been played. I'm not I'm not worried. Once it comes to teams and singles, woo, even the Finstock Exchange should be get, get, getting nervous about us. He's the new rookie on the block. Oh, he's so impressive. I beat Drew McGuini. I beat Bibiani. I beat some of the best players. It should, actually should be an honor for Ben to be placed against me because it's saying that Christian thinks he could be a great player because he's going to test him against me. It has been shown that th those days are done. Whenever we get matches, I'll be ready to play. I'll be ready to get points for my team. Now, How many times has Ben Goddard beat JT? I'm going to tell you it's going to be zero. I can't wait. Yeah. All right, Andrew, that's why people love the showdown. It's not just the return of old favorites and the exciting promise of new competitors. It's the talk. It's the verbal yeah. war of words that ensues, not just between competitors, but faction managers. And when you get Gucci versus Kate Mulligan, that's a that's a pretty good ball game. Yeah, I mean, a, a lot of screaming is to be expected when either one of them is on camera, especially Kate. Uh, maybe there'll be some raw meat. Maybe Gucci will wear a shirt today. I don't really know, but all I know is that of the four people that are re representing the two respective squads, they all know how to talk a good amount of trash. Well, look, Gucci wearing a shirt for three rounds may be too much to hope for, but something that everybody has wanted and wished and prayed is a schmodown free-for-all. 40 competitors looking for that prize. Christian Harlov, I think, is going to be announcing that with me. It's going to be an extravaganza that you can get on pay-per-view, or if you're a member of our Schmodown Patreon, check out the tiers there. It's an exciting time here at the Movie Trivia Schmodown, and we are pumped to get this match underway. Andrew Guy, I have one question and one question only. You, uh, you ready for this? Yeah, I mean, um, <clears throat> I, 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 I think so. Then that means it's time for the movie trivia schmodown. Three rounds to the finish. Introducing first, representing the Den with a record of one win, no defeat in the singles part of the schmodown world. He is Ben the Bandit Goddard. Ben, look at you, fresh, ready to go. You have baby Kermit behind <laughs> you. You are ready for a fresh start in the movie trivia showdown. How did you spend your off season? What was the training like? What has been the faction support you've gotten from the den? Oh, exactly what I needed. Last year with the introduction of factions, we didn't really know how to play it. And now we're doing study sessions, we're friends, we're constantly talking, and that's exactly what I needed. And I'm so excited to play my first match and to flex how much I've improved since last February. Last February was when I played my last singles match. So I'm excited to get back into it. Guy, you got anything you want to ask the bandit before we move on? Uh, Goddard, I'm excited to see you play today, man. I'm really excited to see. Are you ready to put up another perfect round here against the Little Evil? I'm hoping so. I'm ready to go. I know the question writers have been throwing some really sneaky curveballs in there. So hopefully I'm ready for it. And it's good to see you too, Andrew. I love you on the desk, brother. Thank you, man. Excited to be calling your match is my very first match. I'm honored. I was going to say, you love the guy on the desk. He's only been on the desk for like five minutes. But you know what? That's fine. Okay, then introducing <laughs> his opponent. Hey, kid, you uh, you want to take a shot at this one? Me? Come on up to the big leagues. Um, <clears throat> and his opponent, representing the Finn Stock Exchange, making his return to the ring for the first time since 2019 with a record of nine wins, ten defeats, and one knockout. He is the former movie trivia team's champion of the world, J.T. 
That was a great intro and a worthy one for one of the most lovable characters to ever cross the movie trivia schmodown or Hollywood or Ecuador for that matter. So, JT, you're back. And simply put, how does it feel? Feels great, Mark. Uh, you know, people have been always studying for the schmodown. When I started the schmodown, I wasn't really like that. I was kind of like Goodwill Hunting. Someone would write a movie trivia question on a wall. And as I walked by throwing some trash away, I would just write it down because I just knew it. I just knew what the question was and the answer. Now I'm in this new version of Schmodown and I'm actually studying a little bit. I was dangerous before. I was a talent that was just, it was untethered. It was untaught. Now I have, feel like I've leveled up to a new kind of player and I, I can't wait to just tear through this league. All right. Do you have anything you want to say to your opponent? I mean, it's been the band of Goddard and by the time he got to the Schmodown, you were already off on another mysterious assignment away from us. Listen, when I saw I was playing Ben, I immediately thought I was playing Ben Bateman. I'm just now realizing I'm playing Ben Gobbler or something like that. And I don't even know who the Kate McMuffin, some sort of manager that I'm not even that familiar with. I thought I was playing with somebody who does at my caliber. You know, not that Ben's even quite there, but I don't even know this kid. I'm just going to go in here and kick his ass and see what happens. Well, as we get the competitors here on screen now, Andrew, I'm going to tell you something. These competitors look ready. Yeah, you know what? I think they are. So, gentlemen, let's get into your rules of round uh, number wait, wait. one. That, 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 we, uh, we're not there yet, bud. Oof. The rules of round number one in the Movie Trivia Schmodown singles. Eight questions from eight different corners of Movie Trivia Schmodown know-how. Each question's worth a point. There's no penalty for missing a question. There is no stealing in round number one. As soon as Andrew or myself ask the question, you have 15 seconds to get that from your brain into your fingertips onto whatever writing surface you prefer. Once we ask you by name or nickname, please show what you wrote to your camera at the same time you verbalize your attempt into the microphone. I'll remind each competitor, you have three usages of the JTE rule. And Josh, if you can remember what that is, then that's on you. Ben, I assume you know what a JTE rule is as yeah. well. It's a repeat. If you need us to ask the question again, you didn't hear it right, you want to buy yourself another 15 seconds to get that correct answer, use a JTE rule. You also each have one challenge. You may utilize at any point throughout the three-round match. We'll bring your manager in. You may delineate to your heart's content. And then ultimately, they will confirm and ratify that said challenge is taking place. So here we go. Ben, the Bandit Goddard, are you ready? I am ready to go, Mark. And been waiting a while to say this one. Little Evil, JTE, are you ready? Let's do it. Then let's get ready to mow down. Question number one is in the category of animated film. And here it is. Movies drawn by a hand or on a computer. What Disney animated film follows the characters Quasimodo, Esmeralda, and Judge Claude Frollo? There's something comforting about going back to animated for the first question regularly here in the movie trivia schmode. And even if you don't always get it right, it's nice to know that that's going to be the lane you're getting the question in. Might just been alphabetical, but you're right. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. Going to JTE first. What do you have? Hunchback of Notre Dame. That is a point. Hunchback of Notre Dame. And Ben has it. And Guy, it is one to one. And I also think one. JT misspelled something in there. So he's back, folks. I believe the R was in the wrong place, but we'll, we won't hold it against him. Here you go, oh, gentlemen. Oh, oh, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> the second Question of the day here in the categories of 80s movies. 80s movies. Who plays James Bond in the 1983 film Never Say Never Again? Ironically, they say it twice in that title there, Ellis. <laughs> yeah, you kind of kind of broke the rule. The movie just... <laughs> it's it's kind of impossible to not break the rule. You it, know? it seems a little bit ridiculous that that'd be the title. But you know what? Big Four, fan. Three, two, as am I. One. Pens down. Going to you first, Goddard. What do you got? Sean Connery. Mm. That is correct. And does JT have it? Or Andy Dalton. Andy oh, Dalton. Right. <laughs> yeah, I don't think that's even right. I don't think that's even close to it. He <laughs> was, in fact, a quarterback that I Ben know, Goddard I... would rather forget. Hey, he's on the wrong. Bears now. He's not my problem. <laughs> not my problem anymore, Mark. I, I got to say, this really makes me miss JTE. Please continue. <laughs> 
He's back, hopefully for good, folks. And your next category is in the world of dramas. Who plays the real-life screenwriter Herman J. Mankiewicz in the 2020 film Mank? I believe this film is in black and white, Mark. Is that correct? Yeah, you asked that. Sorry. What's that? I was going to get a new marker after this one real quick. Sorry. Yeah, good work. Five, four, three, two. One pens down and jeté. Uh, Gary Oldman. He spelled it right and he got it right. Gary Oldman. All right. As the bandit is going to replace his pen. Do you have to go to the store? Oh, he's already got it, Andrew. He's yeah, prepared. I'll be, I'll be our back guy. A man prepared for the day. Here we go, gentlemen. In your fourth question of the day in the category of action adventure. Action adventure. Which 1990s action film starring Arnold Schwarzenegger has the tagline... When he said, I do, he never said what he did. Expert reading of that yeah, tagline. I, I'm glad that it wasn't a missed opportunity to do one of Christian's impersonations because it would have been horrible. I'm glad, like, hopefully I get to do comedies. You got to do action adventure. That's your thing. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. We are looking at you and your new pen first, Ben. True Lies. True Lies is correct. And JTE. True lies. Says oh. I do as well. Four to three ball game here. Ben Goddard still perfect. Halfway through round number one. Your next category is black cinema. And here it is. Michael B. Jordan plays the real life individual Oscar Grant III, whose life takes a tragic turn on New Year's Eve 2008 in what film released in 2013? Both these guys playing great games right now, Mark. I mean, JTE obviously with that early miss, a bit frustrating, but still only within one. Really nice. Yeah, I knocked the rust off a little bit. Back mm -hmm. on his feet. Five, four, three, two, one. Pens down. JTE, what do you got? Uh, Fruitvale Station. That is correct. Fruitvale Station. And Ben Goddard had it as well. They continue to cook. And your next category, what is it, Andrew? Uh, it's in the category of comedies. <laughs> I, you know i've heard that one before that feels good that feels good that's what it's always been like all right here we go comedies gentlemen gary marshall directed anne hathaway chris pine and julie andrews in what 2004 film yeah see i'm, I'm glad that i could just laugh at comedies because when i'm doing these with christian it's harder to get him to laugh than it was for 10th grade mark ellis to get a date to the dance yeah, and that, guys, that was really tough Four, for Mark back then. Three, two, you were there. One, <laughs> Ben's down. Ben, what do you got? Is it the Princess Diaries? It is the Princess Diaries 2. JT, did you have it? Oh, I also had the Princess Diaries. Wow. Yep. Princess oh, Diaries. That's a sequel. I wanted to give it to both y'all, but those are the curveballs that we hinted yeah, at. Mm -hmm. I'm at you, courtesy yeah. of the writers. Your next question. Now that we have no perfect game left in round one is in the category of movie release dates. Here we go. What year saw the release of the franchise reboots, Casino Royale, Superman Returns, and The Pink Panther? Yeah, movie release dates not always a category you want in round one, Ellis, but <clears throat> I do think there's a ton of great context usually given in round one for these to get to. You usually only have to latch onto one movie. Scott Mance would agree. Five, four, three, two, one. JTE, you're up what first. 2006? <laughs> hey! Dang, got it right. Just I got bad. it. All right. The year I graduated high school, 2006. There it is. Right. I am Ooh. older than you, sir. <laughs> hey, I graduated in 2006 also. Got it. Let's go. Hey! You're older than us, than me as well, then, Ellis. <laughs> it's fair. He's not, not telling lies here. Just get to the next category, kid. All right, gentlemen, your final question of the round comes in the category of horror thriller. What 1996 horror comedy featuring Jake Busey, D. Wallace, Jeffrey Combs, and Chi McBride has the tagline, Death is no way to make a living? Man, the age-old question. Is it Chi McBride or Shy McBride? I'm pretty sure I said it wrong, if that answers the question. I feel like I didn't get it right. And five, The other guy says stuff wrong, too. Four, three, two, one. Pens down, gentlemen. 
and go ahead, Mark. I don't know who's first. This I, I'm overstepping my bounds here. You're doing great so far, as is Ben Goddard. It's up to you. What do you got? Uh, I don't think it's right. The Frighteners. It actually is right. That oh, is cool. Wow. Nice. Oh, cool. JT have it. The Frighteners. Peter Jackson. All right. The Frighteners it is. Uh, it was close enough, Ben. I, yeah, I, was, it I was making sure. I was making sure. <laughs> After <laughs> round number one, it is seven to six. As we move on to round number two, here's the rules. It is the wheel round. The wheel of fate, doom, and justice. JT, don't freak out. It's actually a virtual wheel. So you just spin it with whatever is inside that backwards hat of yours. Once you do settle on a category, four questions from that particular realm will emerge to you and only you. Each question is worth two points. There's no penalty for missing a question, but there is stealing available in round number two. So if you're not sure of the answer, ask us multiple choice. We'll give you four options, one of which we think is the correct answer. At that point, the value of the question goes from two down to one. All JTE rules and challenges still eligible in this and every round. JT, um, you are back, and we love that. But you're also losing by one, so Ben the Bandit, it's your call. Do you want to spin that wheel first or defer to your opponent? Age before beauty. And Light. it is Gucci. Gucci got 60 seconds to uh, do whatever you two do together. <sighs> hey, it's like you never left, bro. You know, Andy yeah. Dalton, that's that's it. You got, you know, you got the, the crazy thing out of the way. It's all good. I mean, yeah. we're not worried here. This is what we do here. This is where you crush. You know what I mean? You got all your you got all uh, the rules mm -hmm. named that are named after you still left. So always think mm -hmm. about that. You know, mm -hmm. multiple choice is always there. You know that as well. You know, great first mm -hmm. round. You're back in business. Uh, let's 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 spin this wheel and see what's up. You know what I mean? Yeah, we don't even need to talk game. Uh, you watch any good movies lately? Uh, what are you eating these days? Yeah, you know, well, all good stuff. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm uh, just sitting here driving people's dream cars. You know what I mean? That's I all mean, I do. people don't know this. You're a great cook. He's cooked for me several times. Oh, steak and everything. It's fantastic oh, stuff. It's, it's unbelievable. Anyway, we really can good. make that clock go faster. You anything know what? Anything I do good is always, you know, the best. Do well. Yeah. Use proper grammar. Yeah. Uh, what's going on? We don't do that around here. Well, that was interesting. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> All right, Let's get JT, it. think really hard. Spin that wheel. Round and round it goes. Opponents and spinners' choices on it. Oh, I hate those. Both of them? Uh, they're all both okay. Oh, keep going. Ellis. Oh. Okay. Yeah, Martial arts here. movies. Let's yeah. think here, buddy. 30 seconds uh, to the time. It, here's, I will say, <laughs> I feel pretty comfortable with this. Um, curious how much of the martial arts is going to be outside of american martial art movies i don't know if that mm. also includes foreign films but there's a couple of things on here i don't want oh, yeah. and i feel pr i feel pretty good with this yeah you uh, think at, so? the, at the very least if i feel like you know i need to all go multiple but i think i'm gonna stick with it um yeah how, how you thinking i am uh i'm right with you there because there's some wackadoo stuff on here that yeah. we don't that you know not that we can't mm -hmm. do it it's just we don't want to give anybody you know uh yeah. an advantage here um i say uh i like it i say i say we roll with it you know what i mean let's do some kung fu fighting let's, let's do, it. do it and we bring in ben the bandit once again andrew guy you are the action guy how about you take a stab at these questions for jte I would absolutely love to. JTE, my friend, are you ready here for round number two? Bring it. He's ready. All right. Your first query in the category of martial arts movies is, it's one of your terms there, Mark, mm -hmm. who stars as FBI agent John Crawford opposite Jet Li in the 2007 film War? A new category for an old player here, Mark. It's always kind of curious to me what kind of question difficulty you'll that get would be, in your categories. Uh, Jason Statham. That is correct for two points. Two points. And your next question, JTE. Two points here in the round. What 2000s martial arts epic involves a sword called the Green Destiny? I like this question a lot, actually. I think this is a really nice remember question. Andrew, remember what we talked about? I'm going to oh, go with a uh, talk here. Okay, my bad. Crouch and Tiger, Hidden Dragon. That, that is correct. Thank the Lord. You can just tell me to shut up next time. All right, here we go. Third question. Third question in the category of martial arts films. Martial arts movies. Who starred in and directed the 2005 martial arts comedy Kung Fu Hustle? That would be Stephen Chow. 
a very impressive pull for a phenomenal movie there. JTE is perfect here through three. JTE, your final question of the round, final question of the round here is going to be, who starred as himself in the 1992 martial arts family film, Sidekicks? And five. It's Chuck Norris. Four. That is correct for a perfect, perfect round. Ellis, the last time we saw JTE in a round two, he scored zero points and checked a multiple choice okay, numerous calm times. Down. I'm just saying, man, that is an incredible, incredible round two performance. I also fell off a scooter once. You want to bring that up too? Come on. I can't. Keep going. I can. we, we were going to save that for round three, but now right, that the cat's hey, out hey. of the bag, that was a very impressive round. <laughs> Eight, 60 seconds, they're all yours. How about that Frighteners pull? How happy hey. are you with yourself? Princess Diaries 2, man, if only, if only. You know what? Already done. You both missed it. It's fine. Yeah. Next. Don't worry. We're Listen, you were as perfect as I knew you were going to be, and that was a tricky question, in the, and they got you. Don't worry about it. So here's the deal. We're right where we wanted to be. Um, you've got your great manager, uh, Kate McMuffin, here, uh, yeah. and you're playing yeah. against Limp Biscuit. So that's yeah. it's, it's all of your dreams are coming true. Good old yeah. Fred Durst and Limp Bizkit. I, I knew martial arts is a new category. We knew we were, they were going to be shallower questions. Yep. It happens. He played great. Doesn't matter. Yep. I got to gotta answer my questions now. And the, and the truth is, you, I also know you don't need me. There's nothing I'm going to say to you that's going to make you any better. You are running this faction. You are you are in charge both of the group study sessions, but also how great you can play. So let's and, just let's And we keep have so much in common. Both me and JTE really hate birds. So, you, you know. Boom. We'll Let's bring up this wheel. Uh, yep. All right, here comes good, the spin. It was a good 60 seconds. <laughs> Both competitors on fire here, Andrew. <laughs> <laughs> the managers are just here. And don't worry about that talking through the round two questions. I did that for the first four seasons. It's on 90s. 90s. Ben, Kate, do you want to keep it or do you want to spin it again? I'm not mad about it. But I, I'm okay spinning again. There's really nothing on this wheel that I'm afraid of. So let's spin it again, Mark. I, yeah, I have, I could completely agree with you just because I think this is not a new wheel slice. I do think we're, what we're looking for is to match what he just had. Yeah. And I do think that this is a little bit broader. Uh, so I agree with you. I say yes. Spin again. Yeah. For sure. Very smart, Ben. I think that's a great call there. But we're going to have big own. decisions to make. And it is now It'll Wizarding do. World. I'll that take it. Do. Oh, wait. I have to take it. Sorry. Maybe yeah. do, but that, you are yeah, taking yeah. it. Okay. And now it's up to Ben to pick it up here in the Wizarding World. I'll be administering your four questions, Ben. The first of which for two points is, what enchanted instrument puts the terrifying three-headed dog to sleep in Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone? Uh, a harp. And if you know a good dealer of one, I would love to have that for Molly. That is correct for two points. <laughs> Philosopher's Stone, it. I see what you did there. Looking to come storming back here in Wizarding World. Here's your next question. Who took on the post of Potions Master at Hogwarts in The Half-Blood Prince? Professor Slughorn. Professor Slughorn is correct. And Andrew, all of a sudden, halfway point, Ben Goddard has a chance to take a lead into round number three if he aces these last two. Incredible round two from both these guys. All right, Ben, your next question, your penultimate Wizarding World query. <clears throat> Who plays Professor Lupin in the Harry Potter series? David Thewlis. That is another wow. two points. He is within one of JTE's lead. JT had a perfect round two to match. Ben Goddard, your final question. In the Wizarding World, who directed Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire? Mike Newell. It was Mike Newell and Andrew wow. Guy. Maybe you're good luck for competitors Apparently. because two perfect round number twos. It is 15 to 14. Ben Goddard back on top. I mean, just incredible from both these guys. You saw the reaction from Goddard when he spun Wizarding World. You saw how happy JTE was to go with a newer category, but it was also in his wheelhouse. And that's exactly what you expect from these two guys, Ellis. Hey, audiences like home runs, and it is 15 to 14 so far as we move into round number three. This is the round that will determine the match, unless we move into sudden death overtime. How about that for Andrew Guy's rookie debut here on the desk? Crushing uh, it so far, 
And round three works as thus. We actually need some help from the competitors. We need a series of numbers from each of you. Don't worry, JT, it's just one to 20. Three numbers from each of you to be exact in that range. Once we get your numbers, they're gonna to correspond to a unique category of movie trivia schmodown know-how. Your first question is worth two points. Your next one's worth three. Your final one is worth five big points. There's no penalty for missing a question and there is no stealing in round number three. So Ben, like round two, you had the choice to spin first or defer. Now you get to give us your three lucky numbers first. So from one to 20, what feels fortunate? Let's go seven, 14, and 11. Seven, 14, and 11. JT, any numbers between a one and a 20 that are not those three numbers? Let's do 12, 13, and 19. 12, 13, and 19. It has been recorded and notarized, and now... <laughs> that was genius to spin away from 90s. Maybe you were going to have perfect, but you just did exactly what you needed to do, which is you needed to be in control of the game. You are in control of this match. You really are, Ben. So from this on, you just keep doing what you're doing, man. Yep. You are doing we, beautifully. We knew it was going to be like this. He's a yep. hell of a competitor. He's got yep. six title defenses for a reason. Yep. I knew it wasn't going to be a TKO, no KOs in this match. I'm ready to answer my two, three, and five. Let's I do it. You are. Let's do it. Look, he he got his he got his real choice. I mean, that's all he I got did. the I geek mean, trifecta there. He yeah, got that's the pretty. It's pretty, much, it's pretty much what it was. You know, we knew he wasn't going to take. He's that. a geek. He's going to get the geek questions. He, yeah, of course, and that's what it, they were very easy. You know, for him because he's he studies that stuff constantly when he's playing his games and whatever he's doing. Mm -hmm. You know, look. So when you're over next time, when you get back in town, let's just do. Mm -hmm. it. I'll make the steak again. Well, I mm -hmm. I make this fantastic broccoli uh, casserole now mm -hmm. too, as well. It's mm -hmm. just so good. You know, Thirty more seconds. Don't forget, don't forget uh, you know, your three uh, JT rules, obviously. You know, once oh, again, of course, yeah. after you, I saved them. You know, we'll sit back. You know, let's do mm -hmm. it. You're the best five point answer in the whole entire world, and we, you know that. I know that. We've almost won championships. You've hold, you've held championships. Look, let's let's take him to his five here. Uh, and, you know, call it a day and keep, uh, you know, the train running, obviously, you know? Yeah, let's separate the boys from the men. Let's do this. Yeah, Third round. The way it goes. I'm ready. And bringing back Ben the Bandit Goddard. Ben, I'll be asking you your series of questions. Andrew Guy is going to be asking JT his series of questions. And JT, you're going to kick off. So, Andrew, he selected number 12 for his two-point question. What category did he hit? That number 12 corresponds to the category of the same one that you started the match with today, JTE, and that is going to be animated. Animated okay. for your two point question. Mm -mm. Which Oscar nominee lends his voice to the eccentric but intelligent and heroic chameleon Rango in Rango? That would be Johnny Depp. That is correct. All right. He hits it, forces it back to Ben. Ben, you now find yourself trailing by one. Your two-point mm -hmm. question, you selected number seven, and Joe Theismann's number corresponds to the category of a director of some note, I'm told, Steven Spielberg. Mm. Gotcha. And the question for the lead. While passing away before he could complete it, Kubrick was working on this film that was taken over by Steven Spielberg and released in 2001. Name the movie. <sighs> AI, artificial intelligence. You even knew what it stood for. That is two points and got it back on top going back to JTE, Andrew. Yeah, I mean, that was a very, very fast answer there from Goddard to send it back over here to JTE. JTE, the second number that you chose was number 13 number 13 and you can't seem to get away but it's going to be another animated film but in the category of pixar pixar oh, here man. for your three point question in the film inside out anger says congratulations san francisco you've ruined what type of food He ruined pizza. That is correct. <laughs> Pulling it out of another animated movie. They've been very good to JTE today, and we're going back over to Goddard, Ellis. That's right. We just don't want to know where JTE pulled that answer from <laughs> as we pivot back to Ben Goddard. Now has to hit his three. He trails by two currently. Ben, you selected number 14 for your three-point question. Yep. And that corresponds to a category your opponent knows pretty well, martial arts movies. 
Okay. And your question for three points to regain the lead. Gabriel Eula, once an agent of the Multiverse Authority that polices interdimensional travel, seeks to hunt down all variations of himself in alternate universes in what Jet Li film? The one. Ben Goddard is the one that currently has the lead because that is correct, Andrew. It all comes down to this for JTE and his glorious return. He needs to hit his five-pointer. What an mm. incredible match, man. 19 to 20, here we are going to the fifth, or the five-point question, the last question here of round number three. JTE, you selected the category, the number 19, which mm -hmm. coincides with black cinema. Black cinema for your five-point <laughs> okay. question. JTE, which actor appeared in the films Black Belt Jones, Black Samurai, and Enter the Dragon? I'll repeat, still in play here, Ellis. That's right, five. Four. Give me a JT me. JT me, I love that. In your category of black cinema for five points, which actor appeared in the films Black Belt Jones, Black Samurai, and Enter the Dragon? Five seconds. Five, four. Mm, JT me again, please. Second One JT remaining. rule. One more. Black Cinema, five points. Which actor appeared in the films Black Belt Jones, Black Samurai, and Enter the Dragon? Is it Jim Kelly? Uh -huh. That is correct for a great pull, pull to stay pull. in the game. Marshall arts films technically a little bit there, you know, with Black Cinema helping JTE out. And that even gets a nod from his competitor. Nice pull there by JTE right in the nick wow. of time. And so now it does go over to Ben Goddard to answer his five-point question. Ben, this is for the win. You get it right, you win the match. If you lose, JTE wins in his comeback effort. Okay. You selected number 11 for okay. your five-point question, and Mark Rippon's lucky number corresponds to the category of spy movies. Spy, And I have all three JTs, right? You do have all three JTs remaining. Cool. And your question for five points and to win the match for the den. What 2018 spy film features supporting performances from Charlotte Rampling, Mary Louise Parker, Kieran Hines, and Jeremy Irons. Just an 18 spy film. Kieran Hines. Five, four. Repeat. Three. All right. First one. Category spy movies. What 2018 spy film features supporting performances from Charlotte Rampling, Mary Louise Parker, Kieran Hines, and Jeremy Irons. Hmm. Four. Five. Four. Uh, repeat. Which one is? Okay. Second JT rule. You have one remaining. Category spy movies. What 2018 spy film features supporting performances from Charlotte Rampling, Mary Louise Parker, Kieran Hines, and Jeremy Irons. Five. Repeat. Four. Last repeat. Here it is. 15 seconds. What 2018 spy film features supporting performances from Charlotte Rampling, Mary Louise Parker, Kieran Hines, and Jeremy Irons? Five, four, three, two. Secret Taylor Soldier Spy. Nope. And your winner, JTE Little Evil takes.
it. We were looking for Red Sparrow. Red Sparrow. And yes, the sir. Answer. Let's go, baby. That's what return. you do. I told it is you Gucci you and it is JT yes. getting a win. Look at the excitement the on I these those faces. It honestly yeah. feels like going back in time, Ellis. I, I can't believe it. You know, a part of the young Schmodown fan of me is very excited about what has happened here to see JTE and Gucci take another W home. It, it, it's crazy. It feels like going back in time, man. All right, like we said, Red Sparrow yes, was the tough five-point answer we we're looking yeah. for. So while JT and Gucci work on their wedding dance moves for a little bit, Please. we're going to drop them out. They will both be speaking with Jen Sturger in just a minute, as will Ben Goddard and Kate Mulligan, Valiant in defeat. But Andrew, not only did you call a spectacular first match in JTE's comeback, you might have been something of a good luck charm. What a performance, knocking that rust off from round number one to hitting a clutch five-pointer. I, I gotta be honest, Ellis, it almost feels like the Andy Dalton answer made him feel more at home. Just as Gucci said, just as the manager said, you know what, you can say all that you want about Gucci, Finstock, whatever you want to call him, and whatever you want to call his faction, but he knows how to work with some of his players. I mean, he really, really does. And JTE is a guy that he's had a ton of success with. He knew exactly what to say to get him in his lane, and he just... He was in cruise control, man. I was really, really impressed for a guy that maybe I was a little skeptical about how much ring rust he might have coming into this day. It's a stellar point you just made because I think we all laughed when Gucci tried to build up JTE after missing Andy Dalton, but maybe, how can I put this kindly, Gucci's non-traditional managerial techniques maybe spurred his competitor on to victory. We're going to find out the answer to that and a whole lot more now because our own great Jen Sturger now has an interview with the winner, JTE, and his manager. I hate calling him this, but I am contractually obligated to Gucci. Jen, best of luck. Yes, sir. First of all, first yes, of Gucci. all, I'll let you get in what you need to say, Gucci, because I'm sure you have plenty. Uh, congratulations, JTE. It's so wonderful to have you back. How are you feeling yeah. after your first victory? Do you feel like you, uh, you shook <laughs> off any ring rust? Yeah, you know, that was, uh, I'll be honest, I knew Jim Kelly right, pretty much right away, but I want him to sweat it out a little bit. I just want to, you know, let him know where he's at. Let him know who he's playing with. Uh, I love Jim Kelly. Enter Dragons, one of my favorite martial art films, so I, I felt great. Uh, he was a worthy opponent. I'll give him, you know, ben, uh, was it Ben Gobbler? Ben Gobbler. He oh, was wow. a really good opponent. I didn't know him before. I want to say I'll know him now, but I really still don't. Uh, he did okay. He got Wizarding World, which is like right. Be that's fair, like me getting Names have never been your strong point, as proof with the Andy Dalton reference. I mean, only mm. you would pull up the redheaded stepchild of the NFL as an answer <laughs> on the movie trivia showdown. Let's be real. Yeah, Bond. I gotta start studying a little more Bond. I, I was trying. I did. I honestly didn't think it was Sean Connery. I was like, who else played Bond? And then I was like, Dalton. What was his? There's first been name? a few. His yeah, Dalton. there's been a few. So. My dog's name is Dalton. Yeah, my dog's but, name is Dalton, so I had that part. But Gucci, you got to be feeling pretty good right now. You know, one more win for the exchange. You guys are on fire. What is it about about this season that you feel like just may be the exchange's turn? You know, first of all, I always feel good. But this makes me feel great. Me and, J me and JT together are unstoppable. We always were. So upon getting the three people that we were going to hold, obviously Roca and Barbarian were, you know, one and two. But when we went over... It wasn't a dossier then. I was just like, look, how is the best player in the Schmodown still available here? I called him up. I didn't even have to say anything. He goes, I'm in. That's all he said. I didn't even say anything to him. He just said, I'm in. Yeah, he knew I didn't even know what it was, was about. He knew I didn't even know what it was, was about. Coming. I was just like, I'm in. And then the he told me the next day it was about the Schmodown. So clutch. Yeah, you know, there was no doubt in my mind as we were sitting here, you know, we're going to sit here talking about uh, you know, broccoli casserole. We had no problem. Now, look, Gabo played a great game. He he was really, really good. We knew he was going to trip up. JT never misses his fives. This guy is unbelievable on so many different levels. He is the cornerstone of the Finstock Exchange. Um, you know, look, we never sell up ourselves short on selling ourselves short. We sell ourselves long. We have diamond hands over here. Everybody else has paper hands. That's just what it is. That's the facts. Paper hands. Wow. You're never short on Gucci-isms, my friend. Uh, mm -hmm. But sticking with martial arts movies, uh, what made you so sure that you could you could navigate that category? Because face it, whenever there's something new on the wheel, that's kind of like it's hit or miss whether or not it's it's easy to navigate. Well, we uh, I just grew up a huge martial arts fan. Uh, I, you know, Enter a Dragon, I've been watching since I was a kid. I've seen 
every like Jet Li, Jackie Chan movie. My only concern with that category is I didn't know how many of the films would be, you know, films from not from the United States. I don't know if it goes far beyond. Like Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon was the answer because it was a huge hit in the U.S. Honestly, but it got to the point where I said, even if they started asking me films that weren't just in the U.S., I've watched a lot of the films from good to really bad <laughs> from like other countries when it comes to martial arts. So it's just a category I'm a huge fan of. And I did not want to get some, just maybe two other categories on that wheel that I was just like, I'll take this over to any other, anything else, basically. And I didn't want the chance of hitting something I didn't want. Right. So if I felt comfortable, I'm going to take it. Uh, but overall, I'm pretty happy with it. Yeah, I mean, look at you coming back after two years, there's no ring rust here. This guy doesn't even know what ring rust means. Yeah. I gotta say I, though, do you ever feel like there's pressure on you as a singles player given your success in teams? Uh, no, not really. I, I feel like I play great in teams and I feel like I just want to, I beat McQueenie, I beat Bibiani, I beat Snyder. I beat some of the best competitors in singles. And people seem to just forget that because in this game, you're going to lose sometimes even when you play a great game. So that happened to me in the past, but that doesn't mean I can't beat the best because I beat some of the best. Uh, there's still a few out there I still want to beat that I haven't played. Speaking of uh, McWeenie, you know, Lon, your old teammate, is playing McWeenie. Do you want the winner of that match? Hey, you know, listen, I'll talk to my manager here. We'll decide, you know, mm -hmm. we don't, I'm not going to just jump in the ring with anybody. I want to decide with my team now. And that's something that's new for me this season. I've always been a solo or in a team. And I always just had to worry about myself and my partner. Now I'm part of a faction. <laughs> and I'm part of the best faction in this league. So there's no Easy. way I'm not going to talk to these people. They, they're the geniuses that we were working with it's like i don't even know how to compare slow down, slow down with the geniuses i Come mean on. look Time. you've Time. got Gratis, I mean, you've ugh. got gte jte you've got lomas lieberman griffin mm -hmm. i mean you got this lineup of potential killers uh so i mean if you guys do end up winning the faction standings this year uh we'll have to get you matching ankle bracelets we'll do whatever it takes We'll be compared to the dream team with Jordan, Bird. Uh, yeah. You'll never see a team like this ever again. Yeah, and after we do be... win the faction thing, I'm going to take everybody everybody to Barcelona, too. Oh, can't wait. Oh, all right. All I'm right. going to book well, my ticket. Up. Yeah, <laughs> well, book your ticket right now. Back. Book it. Welcome back, Little Evil. It's great to have you back, and what a statement you made your first match out of the gate. Good to be back. Winners win, losers lose. You see, Andrew, it's what I told you. I, Jen Sturger has the tough job here. <laughs> I mean, just putting up with them for for as long. I mean, there's no timer on that specific part of the show, so it's really all on Jen. And, and honestly, I think she did a pretty good job. Uh, you you heard Gucci there. What, what what did he say? What, whatever he does good, he does best. And winners win, and losers lose. So nothing's changed for him. Nothing's changed for him except he's now got JT back in his stable, and that stable loaded with rookie talent that. Yeah, I hate to say it. He's right. They're winning. What do you make of this faction? Do you really think that they can barnstorm the rest of the schmodown and get him back in the winner circle when it comes to manager of the year and maybe the overall faction championship? I mean, Gucci has done this thing for years where he's looked like a moron until he looks magnificent. And he's looked magnificent a lot. Let's be honest. Let's look at all the titles he's won. Look at the numerous teams he's taken there, the numerous competitors he's taken to the top of that mountain. So you know what? If there's method behind this madness, it's working. It is really working right now for Gucci, his rookies, and now a little evil that looks like a little evil of old. I mean, that was a really, really strong performance from JTE. It was a big win for little evil. And for Ben the Bandit Goddard, played magnificent. Yeah. There, perfect round number two. He had the lead going into that round and in round number three and just got saddled with a tough five-point question in the category of spy movies. I, I don't see anywhere where you would want him to improve if you're a fan of Ben. It just sometimes it does come down to that five-pointer. Do you know it? Do you not? But I don't think his reputation is tarnished at all. He played well. No, not at all. And I think you hit the nail right on the head there, Ellis. It's a really important point that you make there is that I wouldn't really change what Goddard did in his game plan today at all. He did a very, very good job. I love the respin in round two. It gives him eight points, which is exactly what you need to be in the lead going into the third round. The problem, not the problem with this game is, but the problem with this game as a competitor, I should say, to be more clear, is that that five-pointer is so hard to lock down, man. Sometimes it's context. Sometimes it's just who's in the movie, like what we saw today. But that five-pointer is the great equalizer. 
Goddard should be really proud of what he did today. You can't be that upset with yourself for missing a five pointer unless you knew it and you didn't check your bases. But he used all of his JTEs, he used all of his time, and he put up a hell of a performance. My hat goes off to the bandit. Well, we now allow Jen Sturger to go strolling into the den to talk with Kate and Ben Goddard. Have at it. This has got to be a heartbreaking loss for you guys today. It happens to the best of us in this game, though. Uh, you missed the five and spy. Are you beating yourself up with this? I mean, beating yourself up with this now or what? Uh, not beating myself up. I've seen Red Sparrow. It's such a forgettable movie. I mean, it's the luck of the draw. It's all context. It's all subjective of what what's easy, what's not. Uh, you know, I. Princess Diaries 2 doesn't matter now because he, he hit his five anyways. You take that back because I knew that answer, okay? I think it was me and Miss Movies and maybe Kate I that I knew that answer. I, I, I wrote that Princess Diaries one. <laughs> I, 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 I should have used a repeat because I was like, I think Chris Pine's in the second one, but I didn't I didn't know if they needed the subtitle, Royal Engagement in that one. But uh, but no, like I'm proud of how I played, but you know, it's tough losing on the five, man. Like. I outplayed him. Like, sorry, martial arts, the category. Like, oh my God, can I please spin a new category and get those questions? Uh, the, the strategy for everybody else. If you get a new category that's on the wheel for the first time, keep it. I promise you'll get you'll get eight points. But um, but yeah. Listen, it's not like you performed shabby in round two. Like, let's be clear. No, I know. Like, and I mean, I got. I got a, a wheel slice that I wanted. Uh, I was gonna give it to him uh, if he if he spun it, but well, hey, that would have been a disaster. I would have just loved the oh, I know. pronunciation oh, I know. alone. Yeah, yeah. I I, I, I was kind of hoping there was like a spell question in there because I would have loved to see JTE <laughs> answer that. Um, and you know, it like you can't make a joke about mispronouncing things when you do it in real life. Like, yeah, it just. Uh, what is you know? irony, Alexa? Can you look that up for me? <laughs> um, but no, you know what? You played great. Uh, I played better. I missed one question that I needed to get. And that's the difference in this game. That's yep. the difference in this game. And I'll be back. And whoever whoever ducked out of the match of JTE, you're a coward. You're a coward for not playing this man. Like, please. I'll, I'll play it. We'll run it back right now. I'll play anybody, anytime, anywhere. Well, I got something to do after this, so it won't be today. But, you know, we'll put that on the schedule. Uh, you know, Mark was mentioning your reputation. I would argue that your reputation got stronger today. You played one of the best that's played this game, um, you know, despite his miscomings in the spelling department. You know, how are you feeling after today's match, all things considering? Oh, was that to me or Kate? I didn't, I didn't hear that. To you. No. Okay, uh, I'm feeling good. You know, uh, I haven't played singles since February 2020 in the studio. That's how long it's been since I've played singles. Uh, but I'm ready to get back into that. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I played good. It was, you know, like, you know, just like, it's like, a, it's like a sports metaphor. Like Jeff Garcia was being interviewed and said, you know, you almost want to get hit that first time to be like, okay, we're in it now. And once I missed that Princess Bride question, I was like, all right, we're in it now. No perfect game, no pressure. And we went back and forth and it was great. I never thought I'd see a Schmodown match where I had to mention both Jeff Garcia and Andy Dalton, but here we are. Um, Underrated Kings! <laughs> Jen! Oh, you roll. Okay, uh, okay. I will have you put some respect on Jeff Garcia's name. He made a few runs in the playoffs. A few. Okay. Uh, anyways, Kate, you know, how are you feeling about this today? Especially, I mean, all the insults aside, you still have to feel pretty good about the way your player played today. I got to tell you, I feel better. I feel better about Ben not winning the way he won today than I would if JTE was mine and I won the way he won. Like I, to me, to be playing from that, that strength that Ben had, that he was up going into round two, JTE did the impossible. He got a perfect second round. Guess what? Now Ben has to do that. Guess what? Ben goes out and does it. So to me, I'm much prouder of a loss that looks like somebody playing like that than a win that looks like the way JTE played today. I think JTE talking a bunch of garbage saying that Ben isn't even on the, in the same playing field. Not only is he in the same stadium as you, he just took you down to the wire, my friend. So how about you uh, stop talking so much do some research, you know, learn that Roger Dalton is actually the other, but there's, there's only a couple bonds to choose from. At least if you're going to go with the Dalton one, at least get the first name, right? You know what I mean? So to me, I just, I feel very proud of the way Ben played today. And it's a tough loss, but also it's one of those things. It's like, you don't know what you don't know. He didn't know that one. That's a five pointer. He didn't know. He, 
you look at how much he did know in this match, I feel confident about him. He's in the right place where he should be. He is absolutely, there is a reason why I locked this guy and you just saw it today. And it's it, it didn't translate into a win today, but you're going to see this same guy come back and just blow through the league because this he's got it all. So that, of, that to me, yeah. Number of matches aside though, they have the same winning percentage. So you have to look at it that way. <laughs> yes. Yep. I love numbers. I love looking at numbers. And if he's won, if JTE's won 10 and lost 10, that means he's 50-50. Guess what? Won one, lost one, 50-50, baby. Absolutely. And I'm sure this isn't the last we've seen of you, Ben. So, you know, keep your head up. Uh, we'll be seeing you again soon in singles. And like I said, I think you've got a bright future. Thanks, Jen. Good to see you. Take it easy, guys. All right, well, uh, understandably disappointed, Dan and Ben Goddard there, guy. But, look, I mean, the guy's ready for another match right now. He wants to run it back against JT. He's ready and willing for anybody who's going to take him on. The one thing you can say about Goddard, he's not backing down from anyone. He thinks he has to stop to get to the next level. And today, even in defeat, I think he showed a little bit of that. 100%. I love that he's got a chip on his shoulder still. It's a shame for him that that chip on his shoulder is being magnified by the fact that he had this win or victory maybe stolen from him a little by a guy from the past in JTE, but that's what you have to do. That's what this game is all about. You get the hard losses when you play great games. You got to bounce back. Goddard's head was in the right place. Yes, he's a little bit upset, but you totally understand why he's upset, right? Again, very, very good game coming down to the five-point question. It feels frustrating. And the other part is you always hate losing to heels. I might know a thing or two about that, but they never make it easy to lose to them. The past, the future, all colliding right here in the present. We had great names like Trisana Toratops, Dolph Lundgren, Andy Dalton, a bear of a very specific religious affiliation, and JT Geppetto. just continues to add to his legacy. And speaking of the future, yes, it is the free-for-all, and it is for you $10 and above patrons. It's also available on pay-per-view to the world. 40 competitors, one magnificent afternoon slash evening slash really morning. This is a worldwide spectacle we have here at the Schmodown. Do not miss the free-for-all. It's one of the most fun live events we put on all year long. And it was also a day of first. Yes, Ben Goddard is now one and one. JTE evens his record at 500, 10 and 10. But we also had, I will admit, a sterling debut on the desk by Gosh. the guy right over there, Andrew Guy. See, all that training we did sort of paid off. I knew what I was doing with you. I, I, I'll be honest, I thought you were just messing with me. I really did. There was a couple things that I felt were uh, beneath me. But you know what? I think it paid off. I think it paid off. Well, good man. It was great having you on the desk and everybody behind the scenes working so hard to make me look like I know what I'm doing here. Thanks to all the competitors, the managers, everybody. Team Skybound. And yes, to you too, wherever you may be right now, Christian Harloff, probably on Luke's Island, hanging out with the Frog Nuns. Drew, you want to say... Hi to anyone. They, you're, you're you're on national, international streaming. You want to say uh, hi I to just, friends, just, family? You know, I, I don't know if we're going to close out here, but I do just want to make one big thank you to our president, to our fearless leader, to the reason I'm here. Grace Hancock, thank you so much. You are beautiful. You are brilliant. And, uh, you know, as you told me, stay smiling, everybody. Mark Ellis signing off, reminding everyone out there to vote when you're able. For Andrew Guy, Baby Carrots, thanks for watching the Schmodown.